Good morning, Clarkston. Thank you for being present with us this morning for our worship service. We gather together digitally again uh, online, and I hope that you will enjoy uh, spending some time together uh, in worship today. Uh, this morning, a couple of announcements to share with you. One, I want to thank uh, Reverend Pat Williams for offering our sermon this morning. She will be sharing with you in just a moment. I uh, also want to make an important announcement about something we mentioned last week. We are going to gather together again in person on October 25th, back in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. Uh, we have set this date, giving us enough time to prepare the space, giving us enough time to let people know about our regathering and prepare for our worship service again. And we really hope that if you are able, that you will join us in worship that morning. Uh, there will be no Sunday school gathering that morning, but we will begin worship at 11 o'clock. And we will be following all uh, the appropriate CDC guidelines and guidelines that the North Georgia Conference has in place for gathering together again. This means we'll be really spaced out in the congregation. We will have plenty of space in the pews to spread out. Um, we will uh, ha require masks uh, during the worship service, except for when an individual or a very small group is speaking or performing music uh, or a part of the worship leadership. And uh, we'll have hand sanitizer and the air will be running and the doors will be open and all of those elements uh, make for our size group in that size room a pretty safe place to gather. Uh, I know plenty of churches that are gathering in smaller areas with more people and they are still following the guidelines. So I feel pretty competent and confident that uh, we will be uh, we'll be doing well in our service to gather again on the 25th. So uh, I really hope that you will take some time to join us that day and uh, we will be glad and thrilled actually just to be back together uh, in some capacity. Um, we will um, continue to update our progress on a weekly basis so we'll let you know each week what our plan is and uh, but we're gonna we're gonna give it another shot and we hope that you will be present for us that morning so thank you for your continued support in all of this time where we've been away from each other um, thank you for supporting the church and we look forward to seeing you soon good morning Clarkston Today I'll be playing and singing What a Fellowship. Not the usual version that we do in, uh, in the hymnal. It's the same words, but a little bit more up tempo, tempo. So feel free to stand up, clap your hands, get that blood flowing. Let's sing and praise the Lord together.
Evans uh, Clarkson. Oh, it's just so wonderful to come before you this Sunday morning. Uh, truly, I do believe God is good and He and He's all, all uh, that we can have Him to be if we would just let Him. I'm coming to you this morning with the, uh, a little sermonette. Just want to share a few words with you. And as we go through, I want you to follow me. And before I go into that, let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Master. Oh, for another opportunity to come before your people and express the word that you have uh, inspired of us. Now, Lord God, let it go out. Oh, Lord God, and let it cover all that is it intended to. Those that are sick, oh, my Father, just touch their bodies. Oh, bring them forth in the name of Jesus. Reach your hand out from your from your, um, uh, fr from your position of healing and just heal those who require it right now. In the name of Jesus, do we do pray. Now let us go into the sermon. Uh, the sermon uh, title that I've chosen is This Too Shall Pass. Um, I looked for the phrase in the Bible, but I did not find it stated as such. Instead, I found, though, that there is hope uh, that is conveyed in the Bible that is seminally close uh, that we can that that we can have uh, and give us some comfort and peace as we endure or go through this pandemic of COVID-19. We look we keep looking for the period to end, and as we hear of people coming down with its infection, uh, or even worse, family or friends dying from it, it saddens us. In life struggle, we wonder how, how uh, often, uh, how, we wonder how often circumstances uh, change, especially if they are negative in context. A simple phrase such as, this too shall pass, can bring little comfort and sometimes uh, uh, a resolution. But why do we find peace uh, and comfort in such a simple phrase? Uh, most people believe that this phrase came directly from the Bible itself. Unfortunately, this is not the case. I found that according to Rabbi Lisa Rubin, King Solomon was trying to humble his wisest servant, so he asked him to perform a seemingly uh, impossible task, to find something that did not exist. He requested a magic ring, one that if a satin man wore it, uh, then he would, he would become uh, happy. Uh, he would become happy. And if a happy man wore it, uh, he would become sad. That's crazy, isn't it? The story suggests that the servant could not find anything uh, of such nature. So King Solomon decided to, upon himself to go to the jeweler uh, and, and, and design a ring uh, with the inscription uh, in Hebrew saying, Gemma ze ya abor, which means this too shall pass. Over the years, the phrase has been widely used, even by Abraham Lincoln himself. This phrase has apparently been famous because he used it in his speeches. If it is said uh, an Eastern monarch once uh, charged a wise man to invent a sentence to be ever uh, in our view uh, and which would be true and appropriate in times such as these. Uh, and I implore you to look further in Daniel 9, 11 for uh, more on this subject. In Deuteronomy 28 though, the phrase, it shall come to pass, uh, is repeated twice. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord our God, to observe carefully all of his commandments which he commanded of you today. But the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on earth if you use them. As Christians, we have the victory over this war. Stay with Christ 
as he gives us utterances and he will see us through victoriously. My last book reading uh, of the book club that I'm a member of from the book of Dr. Miles Monroe uh, and the title of that book is Living with Purpose. He said in the chapter that is entitled, You Have a Part of God, and I quote from this section, You are who you are because God took you out of himself. If you want to know who you are, you must look at the creator, not the creation. He said there are three words we use to describe God. First, God is omniscient, which means he is all-knowing. Second, God is omnipresent, which means God is present everywhere. And the third, God is omnipotent, which means God is always present. God is always full of power. He has in him the potential for anything and everything. From the beginning, God gave the same ability to be potent to all his creations. He planned, uh, he planted within each person or thing he created, including you, the ability to be much more than it is at any moment. Thus, God created you to be omnipotent. That is not to say we are equal to God. No, what I am saying is that the word omnipotent related not only to God, but to us Christians as well. We are always full of potential. Our potential is the dormant ability, reserved power, untapped strength, and unused success God designed into each one of us. What I see when I look at you is not all that you are. It is only what you have become so far. Your potential is much greater than what you are right now. What you will become is much more than we could ever believe now. What you will become is much more uh, than what we could ever believe that we can become. You are somebody because you came out of God and he leaked some of himself into you and into me. You are my Christian brothers and sisters and I trust and, and I trust that you, my sisters and brothers, want to put in your memory the, uh, the, the things that God has potential for you as his chosen people. We know that the word is true, and if we dwell in it and not through fear, he will see us through. Listen, this pandemic has lasted longer than any one of us wanted. It has claimed lives of many families and friends and is trying to prevail the land. But the enemy is a liar. This pandemic is a liar. And we, the righteous, shall prevail. The sinful nature of man shall not win because way back over 2,000 years ago, when sin entered this land, God sent his son Jesus to overcome sin and his sinful nature after sin. If we would just declare and say to God that for God I live and for God I die, pray without ceasing and tell the doubters that God is real and trust him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and, and repent of your sins. Jesus, who bore the cross for us, and died for our sins will bring us through as victors and bring control of this virus. Yes, we will prevail. What are you saying, Reverend Williams? Take your Christian position and know that God got it all under control. With us as humble servants of God, this too shall pass. Amen. And we thank God.